Hey, listen, you guys, I know this great seafood place, killer wine list, amazing hog anus. So last week, This American Life reported on substitute calamari being served in restaurants. Looks, feels, tastes just like calamari. What is this miracle food? It's hog anus, you guys. It's hog anus. And they don't even have to tell you that it's hog anus. You might have been eating hog anus for years now. You may really love hog anus. What's really crazy is that this is a pretty standard practice in the food industry, you know, especially here in America. More and more, the things that we eat aren't what we think they are, or even food at all. Take Kobe beef. It's super popular right now with every would-be classy restaurant you come across offering the stuff. But if you had Kobe beef in the US anytime between 2009 and last September, it definitely wasn't Kobe beef because Japanese beef wasn't being allowed into the country and Kobe beef can only come from Japan. And even now that it is being imported again, only about 72 tons of it a year makes it here. Now that's not a lot because Americans eat 12 million tons of beef every year. So how does that math work out? Oh, mostly through lies. See, in Japan, Kobe beef comes from a specific place. It's raised and slaughtered in a specific way. When you buy it, it even comes with a serial number on the package so you can look up what specific cow you are eating, like it was a Pokemon. See, the name Kobe beef is certified and trademarked, but those trademarks don't mean anything outside of Japan. They don't hold up legally. So basically, anyone can call anything they want Kobe beef. And the same goes for extra virgin olive oil over here. In Europe, there's an international olive council that makes sure olive oil is produced up to standards. And if it isn't, makers can be fined and their olive oil can be taken off the shelves. But here in the US, olive oil sometimes isn't even olive oil. It can be other vegetable oils, hazelnut oils, even sunflower oil. And just about all of it has added chemicals and artificial colors. Now look, I know, I know. Calamari, Kobe beef, extra virgin olive oil. These are fancy people problems, right? But there's a bigger issue here about regulations allowing one food to be passed off as another, especially once chemicals and synthetic substitutes get involved to replace foods that are scarce or expensive. Take the substitute crab meat that's used in most restaurants. It's basically mechanically separated fish parts that are then mushed into a paste, cooked, in a rope form and then painted with red dye that is made from coal. Coal, the rock, the mineral. I'm not a nutritionist, but I don't think coal is particularly healthy, probably. And the butter topping that's used in movie theater popcorn contains a chemical called diacetyl, which gives off poisonous fumes when it's heated. You know, like the heat that comes from making popcorn. So that seems like a poor use of chemistry. And last year, honey from China was sold in restaurants that's made of rice syrup and sugar water and lead and antibiotics. A lot of spices from India have been found to have been cut with sawdust or lead. Now, why does all this happen? It happens because it's cheaper to manufacture this stuff in a factory than it is to use actual crab or butter or honey. And thanks to lax regulation, all of this stuff can be served to you under the guise of it being something completely different. So now we're eating all these chemicals and additives and things we might be allergic to, things that could be affecting our health, and no one is on the hook to tell us. It seems like the answer would be regulation, but our expectations for food prices are based on all this cheap, fake junk that's being served to us. So now the problem becomes, can we regulate this and still afford to eat? All I know is that I am going to be cooking at home a lot more from now on. How about you? We'll be back later today with another video. Subscribe so you don't miss it.